Now, if you track with the channel, of course you know that we get to try out all sorts of racing toys and video games, and three in particular we think stand out this year. Anki Overdrive with its Super Trucks edition, Hot Wheels AI, and of course, Scaletrics Arc Air. But how do you choose which one is the right for your family? Well, we are gonna do a head-to-head -head comparison of each of these different sets. First of all, we're gonna be looking at what is the hook for each of them? How do they stack up for single player, for multiplayer? How good is the track? How good are the cars? What's the controllability like? And how intelligent is the technology that's used to help you racing? Then finally, we're gonna add it all up in terms of how much value this has to offer both the family and the hardcore racer. So first up, what's the hook for each of these high-tech racing video games? Well, Anki Overdrive this year has super trucks. It's a combination of robotic cars and robotic trucks that not only race you, but they know where they are on the track. This opens the opportunity to launch virtual attacks on each other in accurate pinpoint detail. It also means that the cars can race intelligently, moving on the track to get around you when you're in the way. And each of the cars has their own robot AI, fully voiced, so it's a real combination of video game and physical car racing. Moving over to Hot Wheels AI, well, one of the big hooks here is of course that Hot Wheels brand. So you're getting supersized Hot Wheels style cars that race around a printed track. They know where they are on the track, not as accurately as Anki Overdrive, but they can still steer you and assist you to go around that track in whichever direction you create. There's also a computer controlled racer, which is more like a pace car. But the excitement here is that there's a real feel of RC free form control. So wherever the car leaves the track, or return to the track you can continue racing and of course you do it all with that Hot Wheels AI feel. For Scalectrics you've got the classic slot car racing that has a history and a tradition behind it. This is much more of a high skill hobby than perhaps the quick pick up and play racing of Anki or Hot Wheels. Here though in Arc Air form it adds in an iPad to keep track of your progress through the race. It will introduce things like tire damage. It will introduce random weather effects. You don't steer left to right because the cars are stuck in that slot, but you do have to control the speed of your car very accurately. So this is kind of a slightly older skew, more hobbyist approach to slot car racing with that Scalectrics history and weight behind it. The single player experience for Anki Overdrive is the most in-depth and I think the strongest. Not only can you race against a range of computer drivers, but there's a full campaign to work through. Each of the computer drivers are fully voiced and characters in their own right. In this way, it's much more like a video game with progression both on and off the track. You can upgrade your cars between each round and there's a sense of gaining skill and gaining abilities and also earning currency to improve your car and improve your character as you progress with a single player game that's gonna last a number of hours. The longevity here, I think, on single player is much longer than the other two tracks. On Hot Wheels, the single player racing is relatively simple. You can bring in a computer controlled car, but these don't really race competitively. Instead, this provides a pace car that triggers occasional attacks and you have to try and beat it. It's a great way to practice, but I think the novelty will wear off and players will want to move on to playing other human competitors in that multiplayer race. In Scalectrics, that single player experience is again similar. This is a good way to practice to race against real people, but playing on your own won't be as much fun as racing against human components. There's no real progression beyond the lap time challenges, but certainly you can hone your skill and with Scalectrics, that skill bar is set pretty high if you're gonna get fast lap times and keep your car on the track. But that single player honing of skills is really all about getting on to playing other people in the multiplayer challenges. Racing against real people also works well in Anki. There are a range of different modes to start with. You have the classic time trial, you have sort of video game battle style races, you have a straight race to get to the finish line first, but you can also extend this into more video game territory with game modes like King of the Hill would be familiar to people who've grown up playing games on screens. But of course here the action is on the carpet as well as on your smartphone as well. You can add in additional cars to take it up to four players racing against each other and have a combination of human and computer players. Add in super trucks and you take the experience even further. You have multiplayer truck battles and the new truck takedown mode where everybody battles to 
gain ownership and driving that truck to score points against each other. So there's lots of different variety in Anki's multiplayer and I think this will stand it in good stead to make sure you get loads of value and loads of longevity out of it. For Hot Wheels, the two player racing against each other is where the real fun is. There's the RC style physical controller and the audio feedback that tells you how you're progressing. It gives you lap times, it gives you positions and also it keeps you aware of what attacks you've triggered on other races and which attacks you've had triggered against you. Each car gets three of these attacks each race. The attacks aren't targeted but do offer a way to add a layer of tactics into what is otherwise pretty straightforward racing battle. Again, a nice touch in the multiplayer is that although the cars do leave the track sometimes, when you're playing on that expert mode, you can simply drive them back on course without getting up and placing them back on the course like you have to if Anki Overdrive or Scalectrix cars come off. Scalectrix really comes to life with two players. This is where the real skill is because you have that challenge of a human opponent edging ever closer to taking your car to the limit in terms of controlling its speed to get around the corners and maximizing those straight speeds to get that lap time down. The arc air element of these races not only means that you can control the race with the wireless controller, hop up and put cars back on the track when they fly off, but also means your laps are counted automatically and you also have to keep an eye on fuel and tire wear as well as a variety of weather weather effects that come into play that will affect not only your speed but also how much damage you're doing to your tires as you hammer around each corner so again at the hobbyist end of the spectrum you're going to have to spend a long time really honing your skills to beat your human opponent and in multiplayer with Scalectrics Arcare this really comes to life. In terms of track Anki Overdrive is the most flexible. It snaps together with magnets which gives it a confident connection while at the same time having enough tension in it to be able to be flexed up and down onto surfaces. So you can create multi-level races very simply. In fact, we've even created a race for us outside in the garden going up and down into an apple tree, which is something you simply wouldn't be able to do with the other kits we're looking at here. Like Real FX before it, the track in Hot Wheels AI is relatively fragile. It's kind of thick, plasticated card, and it hooks together with a sort of a tab and eye technique. So you, you need to keep it relatively flat. You can put a few little bumps in it because it does flex, but again, you need to be careful. Potentially, when you're moving it, we also found that it can come apart. So making sure you set it up in the right place is important to begin with. Because it's quite simple and because it's quite low cost in terms of the track, you do get an awful lot of pieces. So you can make a nice wide range of circuits with Hot Wheels AI straight out of the box. Now, of course, the Scalectrix track has been classically honed over the years and offers a quick, confident, snap together solution. It's easier to put together than it is to, put, to take apart. And when you do take it apart, you need to make sure that you store it safely and you store it flat because the track houses metal rails that are powered. And if those rails don't connect, you have to spend quite a bit of time fiddling to get it set up. When it is connected though, there's a sense of robustness and a sense of solidity to the track you've created as those cars hammer around it. Now the Anki Overdrive cars are the smallest cars of the sets we're looking at and they're based on fictional rather than real world models but they have been designed by the same person who works to create cars and vehicles for various Hollywood films like Minority Report and it gives them a kind of futuristic feel. You can upgrade them electronically with the app between races and you can equip them with a whole range of different virtual weapons and enhanced abilities. This means that the cars not only travel faster when they're more advanced and when you've been playing with them for longer, but they're also more robust and more defended against attacks from other players. There's a real sense of progression in these vehicles and equally loading the vehicle in with a computer AI driver means that you can race against a fictional character. The tech here is really towards the robotic end of things and they read the track with great precision, not only in terms of whether, where they are left to right, but they also understand the shape of the circuit so they can be tactical and strategic about where they're coming up to corners and where they're coming up to jumps and crossovers. This makes for a much more intelligent race because the cars themselves are perhaps the most intelligent of the ones we're looking at today. The Hot Wheels cars look great. They pick up on that classic Hot Wheel design, so plenty of flames, plenty of bright colors, wide wheel arches, 
um, alloy wheels there's interchangeable wheels and bodies you can mix and match as you see fit they have removable batteries which adds a little bit to the cost but means that their playtime is most impressive of course not lasting as long as Scalectrics on the mains but certainly outlasting a single charge on Anki overdrive they're about the same size as Scalectrics vehicles but nice here they work both on the carpet and on the track this means as I've said when they leave the track you can drive them back on or you can just simply use them as RC cars and drive them around the house as well the cars do steer automatically in races but have less com computational correction than Anki cars there's a sense that they are just helping you steer around a simple course rather than making advanced decisions about how they're going to apply tactics to win the race or that they can trigger attacks against you when you're racing against the AI player Scalectrix cars are the only one in this test that offer a real world manufacturers and models. It's a little bit like FIFA, you know, having real world footballers names in a football game isn't absolutely essential, but in my family we certainly prefer FIFA over Pro Evo Soccer because it has that official feel and petrol heads will have that sense of authenticity here. Upgrading cars comes down to replacing the physical elements here like wheels and motors and is, is more of a hobbyist pursuit than a video game thing to do. There is some downsides, the brush contacts between the cars and the track do need care and attention and sometimes can cause frustration in younger racers because they can lose that connection and they have to be attended to before you can carry on racing. Of course because it's mains power though you don't need any batteries here and the level of power in all these cars is much higher with the Scalectrix vehicles. In fact, in some cases they're almost overpowered and you can dial that down with the Arc Air controls, which we'll talk about in the next section. Anki Overdrive and Super Trucks are controlled with an app that you run on your smartphone or tablet device. The cars keep themselves on track, but the players tilt the smartphone or the tablet to steer them and also move a slider to adjust speed. They can also trigger different attacks and select attacks on the screen and you get a readout of whether you're hitting your opponents and also how much energy you've got left if you get hit as well. This creates a strong video game feel but we found for some younger players there's a slight disconnect between the action and what's happening on your screen compared to having a physical controller where you're actually moving left and right on a physical stick but certainly in terms of feedback and creating the sense of story the controls in Anki Overdrive are designed to create that feel of you've got a video game but in the real world and with fully voiced characters too. Moving on to Hot Wheels AI, the controller here has certainly improved since the Real, S Real FX version last year. You have a physical controller, the buttons and the nomenclature on those buttons is much clearer. It's easier to get started to know which button to press and when you're racing you have a simple left right control and a trigger to move forwards and backwards and control the speed and you also have some attacks on the right trigger so it is very familiar in terms of video game style but because it's a physical controller it has a much higher accessibility for younger players and creates a nice strong physical connection between the action on the carpet and what's going on in your hands. Moving on to Scalectrix with the Arc Air Controller, the nice thing here is that the controllers aren't tethered by a cable. That is the air part of this Arc Air name for the Scalectrix sets. You need to look out for that. And this means that if your cars fly off the track, as they often do when you're playing Scalectrix, if you've overcooked a corner, you can quickly get up without trailing a cable and pop the car back on the track to, to get going again quickly. Equally, the controller in your hand, again, you've got that direct physical control, so there's a nice physical connection between the speed of the trigger and the, the speed of the car on the track, can be adjusted with the Arc Air tablet. So you can set up a player profile whereby you can dial down some of the high-end controls. So if you're a young player who is likely just to floor it and squeeze the trigger full, as a parent, you can set that up so that they don't go flying off the track, but that limits that top speed. Equally, as a pro racer, that enables you to get more detailed, fine-tuned control at a particular part of that controller gauge as you're squeezing the controller. Again, the experience in the hand is enhanced by what you're seeing on the app screen which is sat down in front of both of you it gives you a lap count and it warns you of how much tire damage or fuel you've used up in terms of value anki overdrive isn't the cheapest way to get racing in the home but it does offer a lot of fun and currently you can get the starter kit for 99 dollars on amazon 
we're going to be doing these comparisons with a dollar price you could look at pounds or other currencies too and i think you'd see a similar picture emerging that starter kit for 99 dollars gives you two cards and a whole load of track which offers a variety of different configurations you can expand on that by adding super trucks which adds not only a different style of racing but these big articulated trucks for 59.99 you could add another supercar for 49.99 so with the starter pack and two more cars you'd then be in your four player racing format of course you need to factor in that you do need a tablet or a smartphone to race here but you don't need to buy any batteries the batteries are built into these anki overdrive cars and they come complete with charges as well again you can extend the track experience with pieces ranging from $9.99 to $39.99 this adds a wide range of variety and crossovers and jumps and even just adding a whole bunch of new straights and curves because the track itself is flexible that opens up all sorts of possibilities to the level of complexity and creativity you can create with Anki Overdrive. So although Anki Overdrive isn't the cheapest option here in terms of longevity and exuberant racing and variety I think it offers really good value. Hot Wheels AI comes in at $75.99 on Amazon at the minute. Of course, you need to factor in the fact you need to buy a whole bunch of batteries, ideally buy some rechargeable batteries and a charger to avoid repeat purchases. This comes with two cars and a whole ton of tracks. That simple track design means that they can include a lot of track for your money. And in terms of getting a big layout, Hot Wheels AI is gonna be the cheapest way to do it. Uh, now, you do need to note that prices seem to vary a lot online. I've seen it advertised for as much as $159.99, which would be pretty expensive. Um, there aren't as many expansions here as for the other two, Anki and Scalectrics, but you can buy additional car and controller pairs for $49.99. And also, you can find the Pro Track Real FX expansions for $69.99 cents which were available from last year and as far as i can tell the real fx and hot wheels ai systems are identical and will be compatible with each other so if you're looking for the cheapest way to get in on racing in the real world then hot wheels ai is well worth considering moving on to scalectrics this has classically been a more expensive way to get racing in toy form and true to that it comes in at $178 currently, plus shipping, and you do also need a tablet to use with that Arc Air slot system. Now that is a Formula One set, um, which includes a couple of Formula One cards and also a bunch of track to create some pretty simple circuits, but certainly enough to get you started. There are a bunch of different expansions for scale electrics because it's been around for so long there's all manner of different ways you can go with this some people create real world tracks and create treat it almost like a model railway sculpting hills and adding bushes you can add a more straightforward track pieces from around $15 to $35 and the cars themselves those real world car designs you can add from $29 to $49. Now it should be noted that last time we looked at Scalectric's Arc Air, there was mention of a pro version which would include and fold in the Scalectric's digital racing format. Now that would open the a possibility of racing more than two cars. I think Scalectric's digital supports up to six cars, which would again increase the price. But if that's the way you want to go, it may be worth waiting for that. Either way, for a hobbyist or a serious racer who has that maybe historic sentimental connection to Scalectric's from their own childhood, Scalectrix offers good value and a nice way to introduce your children to that same enjoyment of racing fun. So there you go, we've got three different racing sets with I think three different audiences. Anki Overdrive offers a really nice easy entry for a super young racers that will expand with them. It hooks in that video game feel and uses the highest level of technology. So if you want a high tech approach to racing with a real excitement, sense of progression and a video game game mode, then Anki Overdrive may be the one for you. If you're willing to have a little bit more patience and want to save some money, then Hot Wheels AI is a nice option. This obviously comes in a bit cheaper. The track and the driving does need more patience to get it right and potentially an older driver with a little bit more skill would be better suited for this. So then we have Scalectrics, our incumbent slot car racing system. 
you do need some patience both in terms of setting the track up and in care and attention to maintenance of the cars with those brushes. It takes it into the hobbyist space which will attract some families and some older racers and maybe even some parents as something they'd like to pursue themselves and if that's for you then of course Scalectrics offers a great option too. So there you go, that's our head-to-head -head battle between Anki Overdrive, Scalectrics Arc Air and Hot Wheels AI. As I've said, that's what we think, but I'd love to know what you think. Which of these sets are you going to be jumping in on? Have you already got commitments in the Scalectrics, in the Hot Wheels or in the Anki play spaces? Do you think we've got our analysis right? Let us know in the comments both what you're going to be buying and also if there's maybe aspects of these games and these races that we've missed out on. Also, if you subscribe to the channel, then you can know when we've got new videos on these products and loads of other video games and toys coming soon.